In the past year, the number of times I've gone to Google search for a query has gone down dramatically, while the number of times I've gone to Gemini or ChatGPT has gone up dramatically, just like I'm sure is the case for many of you. But after doing thousands of queries to Gemini, I have just recently started to really understand how I should be using an LLM differently from how I've been using Google search. A lot of you are probably using LLMs as a fancy way to do information retrieval, but they can do so much more because they're generative. They can do research, they can help you problem solve, they are creative. But on the flip side, there also are a lot of domains where they are worse than just a simple Google search. By the way, this is the world we live in now, and your ability to have a good prompt for an LLM and knowing when to use an LLM versus Google search is probably the most important skill you can learn in order to be more effective at your job. So in this video, I wanna share seven tactics you can immediately apply to improve how you work with an LLM. I read a book recently from a distinguished engineer at Google called Thinking Like a Large Language Model. And that was a really good primer to have a mental model of how I should be interacting with an LLM. One framing from the book I liked was, perhaps the biggest takeaway is this. The model is trained from many humans. It knows vastly more than any one human, but also lacks the coherent lived experience of a single human. So what that means is instead of thinking of the LLM like a human, think of it as a bunch of entities that vaguely resemble humans. And that means the LLM could contradict itself or it could have varying capabilities based on how you're prompting it. LLMs are using billions and billions of examples of human writing and thinking as a way to do pattern recognition and prediction. Okay, so here is some practical advice you can use whether you're a prompting newbie or you've been doing it for a long time. Number one is be very clear and specific. The more information you provide to the LLM, the better the output will generally be. Instead of asking SQL or NoSQL, try I'm building a chat application where users should be quickly able to load up all of the recent messages and they'll likely have dozens of different chat threads with various friends. What are the pros and cons of using a SQL versus no SQL database, given that that is the experience they want to deliver? That will give you a way better response quality because you're giving it more information to go off of. Second, define the task exactly. Be explicit about what you want the LLM to do. So instead of saying, give me birthday party ideas, you could instead say, brainstorm five creative theme ideas for a 30th birthday party. Third, specify the format. If you want the output of the LLM to be a list, a table, or even a picture, tell the LLM. For example, you could say, summarize this article in three bullet points. Or one that I use a lot is, here's the code change I've made, format this in Markdown that I could copy paste easily into my GitHub pull request. Fourth is break down complex tasks. If you have a complicated request, break it down into simpler, more manageable steps. For example, you might have the goal to build a command line utility to get weather information for a city. So the subtasks might be, number one, get the user input, Number two, fetch weather data. Third is display weather information. Fourth, handle errors. And even each of those could have more detail of what exactly you want. Wherever you have the information should provide it to give the LLM more structure. The fifth tip to improve your relationship with the LLM is to use examples when it makes sense. You can sometimes guide the LLM by giving it a short example of the desired output style or format. I actually use this a lot when I can't articulate what exactly I want. So I have a Google document where I track really good writing that I admire. And so what I'll often do is I'll paste in my writing and say, modify my writing to match the style from these three or four quotes or paragraphs that I pulled out from other people. And it does a really good job of trying to blend in that style. Next is to iterate and refine. And this is one of the big changes if you're coming from a world of Google search into LLMs, is that LLMs have really magical memory and context. So you can do much more than one shot prompting. You ask it something and you can ask it to refine or go deeper in examples or explanations based on what you see in the output. If you don't get the desired output the first time, try modifying your prompt or asking the LLM to go deeper in the way that you want. And my final tip to better use LLMs is to consider the persona. And by persona, I mean that both in terms of me as a user and the LLM. So you might say, explain this concept like I'm five. So you're saying, I'm a five-year-old explain it to me in a way that I could actually understand, use very simple language. I've also tried it in the other way, where I tell the LLM, you are a senior staff level meta or Google engineer. Ask me an interview question that I might get asked if I'm going through the interview loop. And that turns out to have a meaningful impact on the quality of the output and the type of interaction that I'll have with the LLM. Okay, so those were seven tips that I think will really help you in your prompting of LLMs. Let me know what I missed or what else you would advise. And keep in mind that we're all going to be new at this. It's going to be a really big learning curve. There's no such thing as someone who has 10 years of prompt engineering experience because 
LLMs really have only come about in the past few years. So that's an opportunity for you watching this video because you want to learn, you are ambitious, you can get way ahead of other people by just spending a couple hours learning how does an LLM operate and how can you get the results you want by talking to it in a particular way. If you're thoughtful and clear in your prompt, you can significantly improve the relevance and quality of the output from the LLM. I'll leave a link in the description for the book I mentioned from that Google engineer, Thinking Like a Large Language Model. And keep in mind, if you think about the large language model as having the knowledge or even the intelligence of hundreds of thousands or millions of people, but it's not one person, it's just doing really fancy pattern recognition, that framing will serve you really well as LLMs become a bigger and bigger part of our lives. Drop a comment with what other advice you would have when it comes to prompting. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.